Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. It's National Junk Food Day and Take a Monkey to Lunch Day. So Bubbles and I are hitting up the Taco Bell after the show. You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. This is your co-host, Joel Pray for Mojo Cheeseman. And this is Chad. You are not your job, so wash. On this week's show, AppCast is conflicted, Glassdoor is blinded, and Shopify gets sidekicked. Let's do this. <laughs> Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Oh, damn. I just woke up. Are you, are you counting down the days in Portugal? Uh, sadly, yes, I am. Yeah, every, time we go, yeah. every time we go down to the bars and the restaurants and stuff, they're like, how many days do you have left? I'm like, stop reminding me. So yep. I just uh, had a little nap by the pool, a little dip into the pool, nap into the pool. Because uh, I won't be able to do that uh, in Indiana, at least not like this. No, no, my uh, so I I got back from Canada a couple of days ago. So my <laughs> Orlando, England, Canada uh-huh. uh, world tour is coming to an end. I had no idea that a a Crown Royal hangover uh, could last a week. Who oh, knew that damn. that Canadian stuff will kick you in the nuts for sure. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a good summer, and uh, yes. as we head into fall. We'll have a lot of good content and stories to talk about, I am sure. Amen, amen. But let's get to... Shout out! There, there. All right, all right. My first one, here's a hint, Chad. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. The Mexican pizza? Back? That's right. Oh, wait, <laughs> Taco Tuesday, as a phrase, <laughs> is now free for everyone after Taco Bell won a case against itty-bitty taco peddler Taco John's. This week, Taco John CEO said, quote, paying millions of dollars to lawyers to defend our mark just doesn't feel like the right thing to do, end quote. That's right. Not since July the 4th has a date meant so much to Americans. Yes. Now that Taco Tuesday, the phrase is free for everyone to use. But that's not all, Chad, because we got some in and out burger news. That's right. Starting August 14th, if you work at an in and out in Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, Texas, or Utah, and you want to wear a mask, well, you'd better have a doctor's note or go find yourself a new job. The company cited better customer service as the reason for the the new rule. All good, though, Chad, because I just read on Twitter that Animal Style now serves as a an effective vaccine to COVID. So it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Shout out to Taco Bell and In-N-Out Burger. Uh, that and ivermectin. Just go ahead, and that, that's because that's what that's one of the secret sauce that's actually on the In and Out uh, yeah. Animal Style Burger. Uh, my first shout out goes to Bradley Clark for sharing the following on LinkedIn. It's audio from NBA player Nikola Jokic after winning the NBA championship for the Denver Nuggets this year. Listen up, check, check it out. NBA champion Nikola, how does that feel? It's good. It's good. The job is done. We can go home now. I'm curious what you are feeling right now and if you're looking forward to a parade coming up in Denver. No. <laughs> I need to go home. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, we won it. But I think it's not the most important thing in the world still. There is a bunch of things that, that I like, that I like to do. I mean, probably that's no, that's a normal thing, you know. Nobody likes his uh, his job, or maybe they do. They're lying. Uh, <laughs> 
dude. So Jokic is a stud. I mean, he's won the 2021 oh, MVP yeah. of the NBA, 2022 yep. MVP of the league, 2023 finals MVP, 2023 NBA championship. First time ever for the, for the Denver Nuggets. Nikola Jokic, just a regular guy, punching the clock, doing his job at the highest level, and just wants to go home. I'm going to cap this off with a little comment from from Bradley Clark on on, yep. on uh, LinkedIn, where he says, Jokic is one of the best basketball, basketball players in the world, yet it's not his main priority. We need to normalize this, especially for dudes. You are not your job. So shout out to Jokic and Clark for emphasizing the you are not your job message. Very interesting. So, Chad, lis- listeners won't know this, but viewers of our YouTube channel will notice that I'm wearing a Larry Legend oh, yes. basketball T-shirt honoring Larry Bird. So Larry Bird, who many think loved basketball as he, he did breathing the Hoosier mm-hmm. air that he did, in his first championship commented in Boston – the only place I'd rather be is French Lick, meaning back home in Indiana. So this is not a new sentiment by basketball superstars, although it is a, a very poignant one by the Joker. Uh, and I appreciate Bradley for pointing that one out. Yep. One my next shout Serbia, out. Serbia, baby. Yes. <laughs> Europeans are taking over. All right. Uh, so my next shout out goes to Amazon, your mm-hmm. favorite company. Well, oh, yeah. Well, when there aren't any more humans to hire, Chad, it's time for some self-serve Bezos style. As Amazon is now offering U.S. customers $10 to pick up a purchase rather than have it shipped to your home address. What suckers are we for bagging our own groceries and pumping our own gas for free? We could have been getting money from Kroger and the local BP. What's next? $10 for taking my own pet's temperature at the vet. I don't know where this is going to go. But anyway, (laughs) shout out to Amazon and their new $10 payoff for self-serving getting my own damn packages. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Okay, whatever, whatever. Anyway, (laughs) shout out to Jim Lowe and DeJorn Anderson for sharing their sexy Chad and Cheese t-shirt pics on the socials. But Joel... T-shirts from JobGet are only one of the items listeners can win. They can also win whiskey, two bottles, that's right. One yep. from you, one from me, powered by our friends at Text Kernel. Craft beer from Aspen Tech Labs. If you need some tech, you need some scraping, you need some data, you need some pulse survey, LMI, you got to go to Aspen Tech Labs. A getaway, a $250 get- getaway. You can win that, listener. 250 dollar airbnb card from abode hr the gen z experts and if it's your birthday you know this you know this you can Mm -hmm. win rum from plum.io and if you haven't taken your assessment yet your plum assessment go to plum.io knock that out but to be able to win all of this you got to register you can't win if you don't play chadcheese.com click on the free link up in the upper right hand corner and boom you might end up a winner by the way, the the the, the t shirts I think you highlighted are Canadians. So oh, I went Jesus. to Canada and I shipped a whole bunch of Canadian <laughs> shirts because it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do it in Canada than to do it from the US. So I have a funny story oh, wow. if you'll if okay. you'll uh yeah. if you'll humor me. It. So yep. in America it's just straight what does it weigh? Right? Doesn't matter if it's balled up, doesn't matter if it's flat, yeah. just how much does it weigh, and then they send yeah. it. Well in Canada I show up with all these shirts. And, you know, they're balled up or whatever. And I give her, I give the, the employee one and she goes, well, that's going to be a lot, about like 14 to $15 per shirt. And I'm like, hold on a second. So what do I, <laughs> I, I order a shirt in Canada and it's going to cost me 20 bucks to get it shipped, me, shipped to me. And she says, well, no, it's because it's kind of balled up. And then she pulls out this apparatus where it's sort of like a thin ruler shaped mailbox thing. Mm-hmm. And she said, if it fits through this, it's much cheaper. So I said, okay, we're doing that. So I'm sitting there like 50 <laughs> shirt bags, shaking these things out, flattening them up, pushing the air out of them, uh-huh. getting them through these little things. And it was way cheaper, like talking $4 versus 15 <laughs> to ship these things. But I made a few Canadians unhappy uh, standing in line behind me thinking what a dumbass American that I have to deal with. All you had to do was say you're sorry, and they would have been okay with it. Sorry, sorry. 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 And by the way, did you say birthdays? I did. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Can you feel the tension in the air right now? (laughs) God. I know I can. 
I can feel it all the way down in my plum. All right. <laughs> another group of fans are celebrating another trip around the sun. They are great folks, and we love them. We're talking about Trent Cotton, Lily Siegel Gardner, David Seagal Bernstein, <laughs> Swarnendu Halder, Suzanne Ooh. Parham, Serge Clausen, Thomas Barrett, Jeff Hunter, George LaRock out with your you-know-what out, Roy Maurer, and Sir Richard Collins. That's oh. right. That's right. Another Happy round Hello. of birthdays. Hello. That's that right. That rolls right into events, kids. That's right. You know what's coming up. It's called Wreckfest. It's mm -hmm. happening in Nashville. It's on September 13th and 14th, and the Chad and Cheese will be emceeing the Disrupt stage on day one with special guests. Going to tease that out there. Not going to tell you who it is yet. Um, at, at the end of the day, we're also working on the mechanical bull for, for, for Cheeseman. Okay. We, we, get, we don't have it yet, but, but we're trying to get there. Remember, kids, Breakfast is all about bringing the entire team. It's a day of learning. It's a day of bonding. And yes, there's going to be some drinks and possibly some dancing, but definitely get out there. Uh, then we have HR Tech in Vegas. That's October 10th through the 13th, mm -hmm. where we're going to be spending two whole days in the Fuel 50 booth drinking, interviewing, and whatever shenanigans we can come up with. I'm, I've been thinking about this one. We're going to have to have some some uh, giveaways or some crazy shit that's happening. Yeah, we're throwing uh, out new cardboard figures. <laughs> we're throwing out <laughs> custom T-shirts. Like It, it could... Uh, it could escalate fast. It could be fast, sexy. quickly. <laughs> then a few days later, fuck, we got to get on a plane and head to Paris. The only reason I'm doing this is because I love this fucking show. Unleash World in Paris, October 17th and 18th. It is a staple event in the HR and recruiting industry. And this one, you got you got to think about this one. If you're yep. a startup, and we talk about startups all the time, and a lot sure. of startups listen to this podcast, you got to check out the digital startup competition you might know that uh adam gordon i believe he actually won that thing uh you got to get your voice out there so that the other partners the other uh practitioners can hear who you are what you pitch and not to mention it helps you out go to the startup competition no matter all of these events are at chadcheese.com click on events in the upper right hand corner right next to free and register for them all we'll see you all Nashville, Vegas, and Paris, baby. All right, all right, all right. It's the topics. All right, gang. Well, we covered the acquisition of Bayard by AppCast last week, and the move has its critics. Notably, AppCast now becomes a competitor to its own clients, other recruitment agencies, and job boards. Despite the potential benefits of providing brand and digital media strategy, going direct to corporate clients could strain AppCast relationships with existing agency clients. That said, the company believes they intend to maintain its partnerships and continue providing programmatic technology to other agencies. But wait, Chad, there's more. Oh. AppCast Sugar Daddy Stepstone has <laughs> launched a chatbot, wait for it, two years after acquiring chatbot pioneer Maya. I'm sure Paradox and Veritone are losing lots of sleep oh, yeah. over the new chatbot. Chad, what yeah. are your thoughts on this ongoing drama? Well, first off, you didn't mention that uh, I have a very direct statement from an anonymous AppCast employee that says, tell Cheeseman we're not buying career builders. So your prediction I hear is submarine <laughs> right out of the gate. He said, we don't want that mess. Um, <laughs> in addition to our commentary during last week's AppCast App goes full blast episode, uh, and everything that you just read down, I think that was mainly AIM Group stuff, uh, which was a great article, by the yep. way. Uh, here are some listener comments and questions. First, one listener says, quote, Bayard, much like agency tech player Radency, now cannot be seen as an unbiased advocate for the employer. Ad agencies are meant to be about people, relationships, customer service. Those are hard standards to uphold when you grow to a certain size and start adding so many SaaS and tech elements. So what do you think about that? We're hearing this uh, I think they are overestimating the importance of people um, <laughs> and uh, particularly long term. Mm. Look, I think the people thing is still a big deal. Uh, I think the lunches, I think the front row tickets at Bulls games, you know, whatever, whatever kind of perks, the the nine holes at whatever, 
um, is still important. But yeah. long term, and we're going to talk about some AI palooza uh, going on last week. But Spotify, which we'll touch on, launched launched what they call a sidekick, which is essentially like a little a little Batman or a little Robin to your Batman uh, that Shopify, is there for all yeah. the answers. I think. A smart agency is going to make technology where you feel like you have a little little Robin to your Batman there to answer all your questions, there to make you sort of confident, give you data and how things are going, that mm -hmm. you don't need to call your rep, who's, let's be honest, is probably going to, going to churn in a couple of years anyway. Uh, you're going to have a, a trusted digital partner uh, that's going to be an agency expert to help you with all of your things. So to me, like long term, the human thing is is overrated. I think the boutique agency <laughs> is overrated. Uh, they're going to have to create some tech that makes you feel like that agency rep is in your ear whenever you want it at all times, minus the three cocktail lunch. Yeah. I, well, I, first off, I this is not a black or white discussion, right? I, I think that there's plenty of gray in between. And, and the, the boutique agency, I think there's still, still plenty of want and or need for that white glove service. When you get bigger, you don't get that white glove service as much. And there is a lot of churn. Uh, if you get into some of these, some of these boutique agencies who have had reps who have been around for shit decades, mm -hmm. um, it's just a different feel, you know? So I think this is going to be for the companies and actually the partners too, who they want to do business with and how they want to do business. Uh, if they want that, that sidekick from, uh, from Shopify, which we're going to talk about later, uh, yep. then awesome. But uh, there are still going to be some more older, traditional, they want to feel like they're being taken care of because they're spending a lot of money. And uh, so the boutique, the boutique agencies, I still have, I still believe, have a long runway. That's me. Let's go to the next listener comment. Yep. Now that AppCast is an agency, how would other agencies react? They either need to find a new tech platform or just dump technology all together. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, they can't dump tech all together. No. Uh, that's just a losing <laughs> strategy. That's just, yes. Uh, yes. yeah, that's, that's just cut the cord now and uh, retire. Uh, so I don't think that's an option. I, I think for sure, look, the... The history tells us that when these acquisitions are made, that when things happen, competitors get pushed out, they mm -hmm. get squeezed, they, you know, products and services get, get um, less effective, maybe they get more expensive, the cost, like squeezing on the cost. You know, you and I talked a while back uh, when, when, when uh, Javite bought Text Recruit and Canvas was still around and we had this mm -hmm. little debate about Canvas is done. And you know, I think you were like, no, they got to have other options in the marketplace and yeah. yada, yada. Well, fast forward a few years later, there is no Canvas. It's Job Byte, Text Recruit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now iSims just has their Text Recruit, which is their own product. So longer term again, no agency is, one, is going to want to get into bed with AppCast long term. Either they're going to have to white label somebody. I mean, they're like this puts JobCase, Pando, job at X even, and, and uh, to me, a pretty good position to either get mm -hmm. acquired or become a, a Switzerland, if you will, white label solution for programmatic, because that's not gone. I think there's an opportunity for Indeed even to sort of make, make nice with some people, but mm -hmm. I, I don't see any agency right now thinking long-term AppCast is going to be our programmatic solution. They have to diversify. They have to look at other options. Yes. And that goes into our third, this is actually a listener question that goes right into what you were saying. How many independent tech players are now left in the programmatic job advertising space? And will they retool to go after agencies that are currently using ClickCast? I think that is a smart decision for any of the other programmatic players that are out there, depending on how much development they have to do, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be uh, some, some opportunity for some of those boutique agencies who, you know, again, they don't, they don't want to give their money to, to Bayard, right? It's going to be AppCast and I know Bayard's going to go away, but still they know that it's Bayard and they don't mm -hmm. want their money going to uh, really a, a head-on agency. So uh, I think there's opportunity there. I'm just not sure who has the runway and cash to be able to, to make that happen. Yeah, and you mentioned a good point. Like the Baird name is going away. So AppCast yeah. is essentially going to become a, an agency. So it becomes mm -hmm. even harder mentally 
to say I'm going to use it would be like if it was Baird programmatic like we're going to use Baird programmatic <laughs> yeah as an as a competing agency so I don't see that as far as how many there are there just aren't um you know Terry Baker when when they sold uh Pando or when Appcast sold it was like the number of companies that can be off the board is small so some phones got to be ringing off the hook for the last few independent programmatic solutions and the yeah. bidding has to be going up nicely for them. Uh, I don't know how it's going to shake out, but it's going to be uh, complicated. Although some people are going to be spending uh, the next year in Fiji, enjoying the riches <laughs> of their programmatic solution that got acquired. Yeah. I, I think, I think the, the uh, big payday was in 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. I think everybody held on and they were like, we're going to wait uh, Pando did find a, obviously a good payday and a good sugar daddy out of Aritone later, yep. but I really think that the payday was there. But again, listeners, we appreciate the comments, the questions, and if you have any of those, feel free to DM either Joel or myself, and we will do our best to try to, uh, to get those on the show. I want to talk about StepStone. I think it's interesting because I actually reached out to Sebastian Detmers, who's the CEO of StepStone. Yep. And, uh, you know, because they just launched a quote unquote Stepstone's latest AI prototype. It's an AI interviewer. It's a chatbot, kids, uh, that gets job seekers ready for their next job interview. So it's a chat interface that seems fairly basic, mainly mm -hmm. because it's a prototype. I, I totally get that. So I, I asked Sebastian, uh, I said, so um, Stepstone acquired my systems over two years ago. Is this a prototype Maya systems tech, or is it Maya, you know, still relegated to being used by, by total jobs. And we really haven't seen anything out of that. And, and Sebastian said, uh, quote, it's related to Maya as a foundation, but it's mainly Stepstone engineering plus large language models and quote, which means it's not Maya at all. Uh, it's, it's odd because Stepstone's chatbot Maya was supposed to bring better user experience to Stepstone's total jobs out of the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, but where is it? I mean, we, we, we are, we're having a where's the beef moment, I, I feel, for, for Stepstone. And I'm going to tie this around with AppCast. Here's a great example. If you go to Maya.com, that's M-Y-A.com, the page hasn't changed since 2021. No announcements of new product innovation, no videos of the product in use of total jobs, just a stale old ass page from mid 2021. That's the Stepstone way. Okay. And AppCast cannot afford to allow that amateur hour shit happening during this bear transition. AppCast we're looking at this, and as I see this from the outside in, and even from the inside out in some cases, uh, from sources, that AppCast is really, really the adult in the room when it comes mm. to business around our industry. It's not StepStone. Mm. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Um, I'm going to give them a little bit of a pass, I think. We've been hard on <laughs> StepStone uh, for have, a couple we weeks. Have. And sorry, sorry, Sebastian, just how I feel. Not, yeah. Sebastian is easily the best uh, CEO that's still in high school, apparently by his picture. Um, so, so the Maya deal, I don't know. It felt kind of fire sale. It felt kind of like COVID. Well, what was. the hell are we doing? Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if some investor knew another investor, maybe they just bought it off the clearing track. I don't know, but we do a European show and there just is not a huge, outcry for chatbots in the European market. I think that may be changing, which is maybe why they focus. But I think the real focus is the impending IPO uh, that is apparently coming down for StepStone. They need to come to market with the programmatic solution, the agency solution. And yes, I think the buying career builder solution, even though uh, I've been, been <laughs> said that that's, that's insane. And a chatbot, right? They need to have some AI shit. They need to have some LLM in their, in their tour yeah. with Wall Street. So to me, like, eh, I don't think their customers were begging for it. Uh, and I don't think until now the IPO, it, it has become a focus, but it will be. Yeah, it's garbage uh, from what I can tell and Paradox and like are just running circles around what they have. But at least yeah. companies will be able to check off the box. Yeah, we got the chat bot. Um, but, but for the most part, I don't think there was a lot of heat on them to do this. They just kind of waited around. 
uh, instead of firing some engineers like most people, they said, hey, build out this chatbot thing. And they said, all oh, the tech is shit. And they said, well, let's just start over. Um, I don't know why Maya doesn't just redirect to StepStone's page on chatbots. Like, that's just lazy, lazy well, webmastering. It, it does redirect direct to StepStone, yep. but it's the same exact page. I mean, it's, 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 it, there's just no effort that happened there. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And these are big companies with people that do that shit. So there's yeah. no excuse that they can't put some 23 year old webmaster and say, hey, you know, go to our landing page SaaS solution and make a new landing page that looks cool uh, and whatever has a chat button on it. So that, there's no excuse. For that. That's like that's like when you have copyright 2020 still on your footer. There's just no excuse for that in 2023. No and speaking of no excuses, Chad. Yes. Let's talk about our friends at Glassdoor. Oh, wow. They're introducing anonymous community features like interest bowls and company-specific bowls to boost user growth and facilitate workplace conversations. Bowls. The platform leverages its fishbowl acquisition and plans to differentiate itself as a constructive space while protecting anonymity. Moderation challenges will be addressed and potential premium features may be explored in the future. Glassdoor aims to compete with LinkedIn's identity-focused approach, targeting real and open discussions. Chad, your thoughts on the move by Glassdoor? Yeah, it feels like just a new feature that's added to Glassdoor's employer brand protection racket that they've been mm -hmm. running for years. Right? Uh, hey, pay us, and 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 we'll, uh, we'll you know we'll we'll allow you to to manage your brand on Glassdoor. Uh, anyways, it, it's 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 weird. Glassdoor acquired. Fishbowl back in 2021. Uh, and we said that uh, on that week in the podcast, anom anonymous employee forums are nothing but chaos and breeding grounds for trolls, gossip, and distractions. Mm -hmm. uh, with the sneak peek explainer video, it feels like Glassdoor is trying to move more toward LinkedIn. But does anonymous actually make sense? If I can reach out to someone on LinkedIn that isn't anonymous, why would I reach out to just simply somebody who I can't validate uh, on bowls on, on if they're really an HR manager or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but so I went into bowls and uh, the, the first two groups or, or bowls, I'm sorry, that was recommended for me. First off was the overheard at work bowl. And here's how the very first post I came across uh, posted by an HR manager. Quote, does anyone have an executive level HR leader that gossips with her executive admin and, and creates so much drama? The admin runs all over telling people the information that's becoming a nightmare. How can I get this to stop? The HR leader seems to be surprised and will relay information back to the admin who then shares it with others. Mm -hmm. End quote. Okay. Who wants any of this shit out there? Number one, okay? I mean, I automatically, right out of the gate, drama, okay? Number two, the second bowl I was actually recommended was the fertility bowl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> post, post by a talent acquisition uh, professional, quote, I am about six and a half months pregnant and I was just minding my own business and a male coworker came up to me and said, quote, don't take this wrong, but your boobs have gotten huge. Like, what the fuck? End quote. This is the kind of shit, right, that you're going to get in these forums. This is not professional. This is more about real gossip and, and great distraction from real work. This is not real discussions and real work. This is real gossip and mm -hmm. distraction, right? So any employer who, I don't know how you manage this. This is the problem, right? Because anybody can actually access it. You can get into it as whomever you want. Yep. Uh, so I, I don't know. It just, to me, it seems horrible, like a horrible horrible idea yeah let's take a quick look in the uh, r&d department at Glassdoor real quick let's see let's see what oh geez oh geez all right so Glassdoor bowls feels a little bit like a t-rex you're wiping on some spf 50 as the meat as the comet <laughs> like comes crashing in um that, that that's gonna gonna help them look Glassdoor's traffic has been stagnant for two years 
no, I mean, the lights are on, no one's home. I don't even know who they got to like build out this project. It's a, it's more or less a blind wannabe. Uh, blind has around 9 million users. Apparently they're hoping to get a few of them over. Uh, Glassdoor still has a lot of traffic at 55 million, but the future yeah. is not looking bright for Glassdoor. And to me, desperation moves like bowls uh, is not the answer. Look, ultimately the world is going towards video. Um, posting on TikTok about your employer. No one cares about anonymity like they used to. It actually uh, is a is a negative if you want to get internet famous. So people yeah. are fully happy to tell everyone that their employer sucks on TikTok. Uh, that that sort of hurdle is is gone. And frankly, AI AI makes these sites obsolete because I can go to Bard today by Google and type in what is it like to work at Wells Fargo and it's going to it's going to it's going to curate information from all these sites and give me a human timely answer about what it's like to work at the company both from a pro and con perspective so for me the 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 combination of video and TikTok and reels and whatever else and people becoming famous on hating their company and AI basically taking all the information out there, giving you a timely answer, mean that Glassdoor's time as a review site, uh, you know, apex predator are slowly declining, maybe quickly declining. And this move into bowls just underscores how bad it is at Glassdoor. Yeah, it's more like bowels. That's it's it's that. Ooh, bad. that's good, it's Chad. That's good. Bowels. Like most Glassdoor. of your jokes. 60% of the time, <laughs> it works every time. That's right. All right. Let's take a break and talk some AI. All right, Chad, a bevy, a bevy of AI-focused news this week. Yes. Let me count the numbers and the ways. Number one, studies say using generative AI in business improves users' performance by 66%. That's averaged Holy. across three case studies. Number two, Hollywood is facing its first industry-wide shutdown in more than 60 years, largely due to the rise of streaming and threats of AI. Number three, Shopify is launching an assistant called Sidekick, whose CEO said it may finally give independent retailers the power to go head-to-head -head against Amazon. Mm -hmm. Number four, a pro Ron DeSantis super PAC commercial uses AI as a version of Donald Trump's voice in a new ad attacking the former president. Number five, Sumit Shah, founder of Dukon app, no clue, recently boasted on Twitter about replacing 90% of customer support staff with chatbots, prioritizing profitability over empathy for employees. Maybe they can all find work on Fiverr, Chad, whose CEO, and this is the next story, said she believes AI will accelerate job creation by speeding up manual tasks, allowing more time for creative and interpersonal work. Chad, make the crazy pills stop. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy. What are your takes and your highlights from all the AI news this week? Yeah, we got a whole block again, kids. A whole fucking block. Just because everything's happening, we're looking for cases, case studies, and, and this first one, uh, actually three studies um, that supported the customer service agents. Uh, the AI could handle thirteen point eight percent more customer inquiries per hour. Now, Teleperformance, which we talked about a few weeks ago a company that does nothing but handle customer service for their clients said that they had a 30% rise in the number of customers they could handle because their humans had co-pilots, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are great studies that are happening. Second one, business professionals who used AI could write 59% more documents per hour. That's ridiculous. I don't need more documents. Not to mention, uh, I, I wonder how many hallucinations were in those documents. Um, but here's the big one. Programmers 
used AI, they could do 126%, 126% more projects per week. Humans start, to be, start becoming more of a QA, QC element instead of the coding workhorses in this case. Everybody's looking for cases. Cases are, are being pushed at us very, very quickly. But uh, the big question is, especially with all these cases, are we just training the large language models, right? And that is one of the things that writers and actors are having taking to issue pay and then also also this. Um, Bob Iger, during an interview last week, commented on the WGA and SAG strikes, quote, it's very distracting to me. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. Mm -hmm. And they are adding to the set of challenges that this business is already facing, quite frankly, very disruptive, end quote. Here's a response to that quote from Garden, Guardians of the Galaxy actor Sean Gunn. Play it up. I think that when Bob Iger talks about uh, what a shame it is, he needs to uh, remember that in 1980, um, CEOs like him made 30 times what the worker, what their lowest worker was making. Now Bob Iger makes 400 times what his low, lowest worker is. And I think that's a shame, Bob. And maybe you should take a look in the mirror and, and what, ask yourself, why is that? And not only why is that, is it okay? Is it morally okay? Is it ethically okay that you make that much more than your lowest worker? And if so, why? Why is that okay? If your response is that that's just the way business is done now, that's just the way corporations work now, well, that sucks and that makes you a person if that's your answer. So you should come up with a better answer than that. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like Sean has been listening to the Chad and Cheese podcast for a while because that is just about verbatim what we've been saying for a few years. Yep. As guys like Bob Iger rake in the cash, writers and actors need to solidify what their their future looks like financially, and they need to be on the offense against technology where large language models can write scripts, voice commercials, and maybe even become body doubles for next to nothing. So that does nothing but put more cash in Bob's pockets while writers mm -hmm. and actors that aren't top tier actors yeah. uh, continue to get the shaft. This to me is they're going on the offense, which I think is, is pretty amazing. And you're not going to see this happening from customer service reps, right? They don't have, there's not a customer service rep lobby Yep. <laughs> that's out there. These guys have one. So, so do you think that this is going to make an impact on anything other than just their own industry? Well, I, I would say I was, I was hundred percent bearish on the, the writer's strike mm -hmm. to me, the actors coming out and particularly the, the big name actors. Uh, I know Matt Damon um, is out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some, some news about Tom Cruise Hollywood still needs the big time marquee names. Um, and like you said, it's the, it's the small actors, it's the extras, it's the, um, the writers for sure that are, are putting out content that AI can easily replace. Mm -hmm. You're not going to replace Brad Pitt in a movie by a, with a digital Brad Pitt anytime soon. Right. Now that may eventually happen. Um, so I was glad to see that. I, I think that, you know, this isn't my lane. Hollywood isn't necessarily, as you can tell by my looks, isn't exactly uh, what I'm an expert on. But I got to think that that history says the market will find ways to produce content that does not include writers, these extras, that the market is going to, for shareholder value, for quarterly uh, revenue, they're going to do more reality TV. They're going to do more unscripted stuff. Um, and by the way, the new uh, the new Bachelor coming out is uh, 71 years old. So like that kind of shit. By the way, he looks younger than both you and I put together. But anyway, he's 71. <laughs> he he had the Clooney package at the uh, the the plastic surgery facility yeah. that he got he got updated in. But anyway, you press on that's going to be the, there's going to be more reality stuff. There's going to be more international stuff. A lot of talk about yeah. Netflix producing stuff overseas where they don't have these laws. They don't have these issues. You can't unionize. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, and unfortunately, the market is is going to find ways to keep producing cheap 
content, um, regardless of what Bob Iger uh, says. Now, I think that, and we had a, a great interview with Tom Kenny yesterday that that we'll we'll publish at some point in the near future. But that's a short term solution. I think that's really short term thinking. I, I think long term, if we don't have an incubator for new content creators, if we don't have an incubator for the next Robert De Niro, the next Meryl Streep, like yeah. we're all going to lose in terms of lack of creativity, lack of just, you know, yeah. life on screen. There are going to um, be no I more th- De Niro. Yeah, you know, I think, I think Broadway is going to become really important because live mm-hmm. actors and seeing things live, like yeah. things are going to be really interesting long-term. But I, I think once you start losing that creative, creative edge and why we watch these things to begin with, mm-hmm. Hollywood is going to have to eventually look in the mirror and say, we have to bite the bullet. We have to pay these creators a fair wage. We have to give them fair terms on, on streaming and residuals. I think that's ultimately where they're going to have to end up. But I think for the short term, there's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of shitty content that we have to watch uh, until we get to the point where everyone realizes, yeah, a creative, creative genius and creativity matters. And we're losing that in the way that we're doing business today. Yeah, no, no, no question. And then, then jumping over to, to to Shopify real quick. Yep. And looking at large language models, uh, their their sidekick, which is really just a copilot, but it's a co mm-hmm. a copilot for entrepreneurs who use Shopify. Right. These are these are in, individuals who uh, are are in 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 many cases going against uh, Amazon. Sure. And uh, this this new model is really cool because it's like a personal assistant. It, yeah. it is a digital assistant, but even more so like a personal assistant. And if you take a look at uh, some of the, um, the, the demos of, of what it can do just for the Shopify shop, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was it was pretty amazing. And this is just phase one. So, you know, I think you know, watching truly smart and amazing people use large language models for business will be exciting to watch. While we, we talk about the risks and we'll continue to do that, we've also got to look at the upside. And there's some amazing upside mm-hmm. to these these technologies. We, we're going to need, whether it's for actors, the Screen Guild, or, or even smaller entrepreneurs, we're going to have to have legislation that starts to put rules in place. Um, whether Europe does it first, uh, or the U.S. does, we're going to have to do it, or it's it's going to go off the rails, and it can incredibly fast with this tech. Yeah. So, so some of the stories that stood out to me, uh, and also by the way, Apple is cre- is creating Apple GPT apparently. So yeah. we're going to be able to talk about Apple doing some shit uh, in a few weeks, probably. So I'll I'll talk about Sidekick at, at first. So how many how many small businesses? You know, hey, I love to make I don't know soap. I love to make organic soap, or I love to do, uh, I don't know, uh, colored shoot, whatever, okay. whatever, whatever is right. Like people have these gifts yeah, and then they run into like, Oh, I got to make a company. Oh, I got to pay taxes. I got to, I got, I could do, I got to do all these things. Mm-hmm. Sidekick is amazing because now you have an expert where you can say like, uh, what are the tax laws around employees in Nevada? Or how do I fire somebody or how like all these questions that are really challenging for small business, they'll now have a a co-pilot, a Robin, if you will, to answer those Mm -hmm. questions. I think what's going to be interesting is um, how long is it going to take someone in our industry to create a a sidekick for recruitment or for small business? So think about how many small businesses, gee, I got to hire. I don't know what the hell to do. I just post something on Craigslist and hope for the best. If yeah. they have a sidekick that's like, okay, here's some great ways you can recruit someone locally, or here's how you use LinkedIn, or how, uh, what does it cost? You know, give me a price breakdown between Indeed and and all these other solutions. Like somebody needs to create that, and they they I'm sure that they will, not just because I'm saying it, but somebody needs to create these things because co-piloting for recruiting small business, like hiring, is going to be a big thing. So to me, sidekick is a thing, um, a sign of things to come. Yeah. The next thing that stood out to me the the political ad oh yeah holy hell look yeah the you, you think you think facebook in 16 was crazy this shit is crazy and you and i are old enough to remember remember willie horton yes remember lee atwater uh the mm-hmm. ad that was created and and how yeah. look to say that it was a little stretch was oh, was wow. being nice mm-hmm. there is no regulation on this there is nothing that even says uh, at the bottom, this is an AI generated video, or this is an AI generated right. uh, dis- like voice. 
voice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Wild West. And as these candidates start losing in the polls, they start like they're going to get super desperate. There's yes. going to be some crazy ass ads and shit that goes down. People like my dad are not going to know what the hell's going on. It's going to create exactly. immense confusion in the marketplace and for voting. And oh my God, this is like if AI runs amok in the election in 24, it's going to make 2022, 2020, 2016 look like child's play because AI is going to like just fuck everything up in the election. So anyway, uh, that's a little bit of darkness for me. The third thing um, <laughs> that that stood out for me is the customer support reduction. 90% is no joke. And this is going to be uh, a symptom of many, many companies. As soon as, as soon as Wall Street catches on that you can release 90% of your customer service, you can let go of a percentage of your salespeople, your, your marketing people to AI, things are going to get really ugly in terms of layoffs. Uh, and this is just a sign of that. There's a, there's a new solution, a new software solution called Air. It's at mm -hmm. air.ai if you want to check it out. They're doing beta, uh, beta signups right now. And the people that I know that have been using it say that it is mind-blowing. They can do up to 40-minute customer service calls. They sound like a human being. They answer you as, as the question as if it is the right answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Some shit like that is going to disrupt the world in a big way. So for me, those three th the three things to really focus on from this week uh, is, uh, is the sidekick, the political landscape is going to get nuts. And I think the layoffs in terms of customer service are going to get, get pretty ugly. Yeah. They, they, there are going to be very few areas that uh, are not going to be touched by AI. Even, I mean, even from a plumber's assistant, you have your, your co-pilot with you to be able to help you, you know, with the diagnosis of, of, of the problem or AC or your sure. H, HVAC, right? So, you know, it, and that could be very helpful in an uptime and being able to get people into positions, those types of positions, but other positions, you're right. Uh, like the teleperformance uh, situation, they, they, I guarantee you, they're going to be looking at shedding people very quickly because they've been training that AI for a yep. good amount of time. Yep. It's funny how both sides have used the morality uh, argument in the past few months. So you have you have Elon Musk saying it's a moral issue that people should get back in the office. And now it's a moral issue that companies should continue to retain customer service people. So the morality issue to me doesn't hold a lot of water, whether it's the company using it or the employees, because ultimately the dollar decides how companies are going to respond. If that's, if that's the, the world you want to live in, I hate to be in your world. <laughs> Oh, you thought we were done with AI, Chad. Oh, no. That happened. Yeah. Oh, no. We just saved the sex bots for last. Former Google executive Mo Gadot is warning the world of sex dolls seemingly, quote, alive and dating apps with AI, quote, avatars that are as good as the real thing. Minus, of course, the shared barbacoa bowl at Chipotle if you're on a date with me. Anyway, he suggests that AI could simulate human sexual intimacy, leading to a redesign of society and relationships. Goddard said, quote, if we think a few years further and think of Neuralink, which you've talked about, Chad, that chip in your head and other ways of connecting yeah. directly to your nervous system, why would you need another human being in the first place? In quote, Chad, sex bots are evolving your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is what happens uh, when you make it way. I mean, get, relationships are hard. Let's just, let's just go ahead and put yeah. that out there. Right. And if you're not a, a you know, an amazing looking dude, it's going to be really hard for you to, to, to find a date. Right. And let, let, very charismatic. What have you, if you're a total douchebag, it's going to mm -hmm. be hard. Right. Uh, so Take, hit the easy button and the yeah. easy button could be a, a sex bot or it could be we talked about the ai uh, a sexual partner that is on your phone right that that's literally just a ai you know text sexting bot yep um th there's going to be a variety of all of those and they're going to be they're, unfortunately they're going to be very very big uh industries i mean uh -huh. they, they are um 
beyond that, I mean, I, I don't want to think about <laughs> chips in our heads and, and, you know, um, an, animatronic women that are running. I just, I, I can't, I just can't go there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I refuse. <laughs> I mean, look, you're, you're right. Dating is hard. Relationships are hard. How much they easier are. is it to just default to uh, putting on a headset and the Neuralink chip and to where you actually feel your muscles feel like you're touching someone and you're like, that is crazy shit. And, and so, so we share articles in a, in a Facebook feed, everyone that doesn't know. And we share this article and I, I was reading it uh, for the, for the, for the conversation here. And as I'm scrolling down, looking at stuff and you know how you get like ads in a lot of these sites that are just random yeah. ads. And I'm, I'm scrolling down and I look at a, a woman, um, like on a couch, I'm like, Oh, she's kind of cute. And I keep scrolling. I'm like, wait a minute. I scroll back. It's a fucking sex bot. Like I was tricked as I'm scrolling to think that's a real person. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, that's not a real person. So even the, the, the literal robots, the physical ones, not just the AI ones, are blowing my mind. So the guy talks about a company or an app called Replica yes. in this story. It's R-E-P-L-I-K-A. -E yes. It's already yep. live. Mm -hmm. I go to this thing. Um, it's scary as hell. And, and I finally get VR. I finally get like why everyone's excited <laughs> because you can put on a VR headset and you can interact with a quote unquote person. And it doesn't have to be sexual. It could be like, hey, we're watching the game together or, hey, we're yes. going to go have wings together, whatever. So like right, right. that is really scary stuff. The, the site says it's an AI companion uh, who is eager to learn and would love to see the world through your eyes. Replica is always ready to chat when you need an empathetic friend. There are already 10 million people using this app that I just found out about. Uh, and with AI, this companion is like with you. Your whole life now can be at the Playboy Mansion as Hugh Hefner. You can throw in as many women as you want, doing whatever the hell you want. We are so screwed as a species. Forget forget population collapse because we're not having babies now. We're really not having babies in the future. I present you, again, one of our favorites, Bill Burr, to describe exactly what the future is going to look like. They're gonna make Victoria's Secret supermodels just absolutely like Paris runway looking supermodels. And you're gonna be able to come home to one of these things and it's gonna laugh at all your jokes. Ah, 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 ah. It's gonna sit down and watch the game with you like it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> yes, it does. Ah, ah, ah. And it's gonna get up and make you a fucking, I don't know, a butt cake or a meat pie, whatever the fuck you people eat, right? <laughs> There's not going to be a human woman in here that's going to be able to compete with that for longer than 90 minutes, even on your birthday. By the third trip to the fridge, she's going to be like, yeah, fucking get it yourself. What am I, your slave? Go fuck yourself. And after you've been with one of these robots, like sex dolls, this, you're not going to be able to go back to a real woman, right, with all her hopes and dreams and her needs. You're going to be coming home. She's like, what is going on with you? We're not connecting. We need a date night. All you'll be thinking is like, how do I shut this fucking thing off? Is it on nagging mode? Why isn't it blowing me right now? And my Oculus is in the mail, Chad. We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The Chad. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know. And yet, you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses. And not one word. So weird. Anywho... Be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!